So with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming back again today, and with us learning about the fact that Daisy Johnson is Quake, that she is an Inhuman, I figured it'd be a good idea to make a video explaining who Daisy Johnson is in Marvel Comics, what her role is, and so what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to kind of be juxtaposing the two characters, Daisy Johnson from the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Daisy Johnson from the comic books. So Daisy Johnson first appears in the five issue limited series Secret War. Now this is not to be confused with the 1984 story of Secret Wars. This is a totally separate beast and in fact for a lot of Marvel Comics fans the way that we differentiate is by simply referring to this story as Fury Secret War. But this was basically a five part limited series that was a lead into both Civil War and Secret Invasion. This is what Marvel used to set the stage for two different things. The first thing was to basically remove Nick Fury as the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and to put Maria Hill in his place. This is the reason why Maria Hill is the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. with regards to the Civil War conflict. The other thing was that this was a lead up to the Secret Invasion storyline, whereby the Skrulls were replacing both superheroes, supervillains, and normal humans on the planet Earth so they could effectively take over the planet. This is the story that gave us the reason why Nick Fury is underground during the entire Civil War and Secret Invasion conflict and why it is that he's the first point of contact that is to say, chronologically, the first person to realize that the scrolls are taking over the planet Earth. Now, Daisy Johnson doesn't actually appear until issue number two, but in order to make this make sense, I kind of have to give you guys a little bit of an explanation with regards to the Civil or to the Secret War story. This was basically a story whereby Nick Fury had learned that the newly, uh, I guess, uh, newly placed Prime Minister Lucia von uh, Barros, who was basically the Prime Minister of Latveria after Doctor Doom had been removed, was basically funding terror in the United States by giving small level supervillains the kind of technology they needed in order to implement their plans. And this was done by using a go-between in the form of a person called the Tinkerer, the kind of person that would basically create these devices. But she was also kind of playing this on two fronts. Not only was she funding terrorism, but she was basically repairing the men's, repairing the rift between Latveria and the United States. And so as far as the government was concerned, she was carrying out the kind of role that she should be carrying out in making things better, when in reality, she was tricking everybody the whole time. Now, Nick Fury eventually learns what it is that Lucia Von Bardos is doing, and so what he does is he assembles a team composed of Natasha Romanoff, Captain America, Spider-Man, uh, Wolverine, along with uh, Daisy Johnson and Daredevil as a way to basically infiltrate um, the, the uh, country of Latveria and to kill off Lucia Von Bardos entirely. But again, during this entire conflict, Daisy Johnson doesn't actually appear until issue number two, and when she shows up in issue number two, one, she looks almost exactly like Angelina Jolie, which is the way that she was designed by uh, Brian Michael Bendis. But two, no one knows her name. And in fact, she won't tell people what her name is. She simply says if they're supposed to know what her name is, then they would know already, indicating to us that her and Nick Fury have a relationship, not necessarily romantic, but more like a, uh, a I guess like a mentor and a protege kind of relationship that goes beyond anything that any of the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents or even the superheroes are aware of. And so what what happens is that over the course of this conflict, we learn a little bit more about Daisy Johnson. We learn a little bit here and there, but not a whole lot. It's not actually until issue number five that we learn quite a bit about her character, or at least as much as Brian Michael Bendis gives us. And what we learn is that once Nick Fury has been removed as, as the uh, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Maria Hill has stepped into his role, that she begins interrogating Daisy Johnson. And we learn her name is Daisy Johnson. Again, something we didn't know up until this point. We also learn she has the ability to uh, to enact seismic activity, to basically make earthquakes. But she can do this in a very, very fine way. That is to say, she has almost total control over her abilities. And in fact, we'll see her implement the fine tuning of these abilities once we actually get into the story of her and the, uh, the Avengers and the X-Men dealing with Magneto following the House of M. But with her character, one of the other things that Maria Hill basically informs us of is that no one knows who she is. There's not a single person that understands why she's there or what she's capable of. All they know is that she's a level 10 shield agent, meaning that she's the only other person besides uh, Nick
Nick Fury or Natasha Romanoff that has that high of a level of clearance, but no one understands why. And Brian Michael Bendis doesn't really give us a direct answer in the story. It's not actually until we get into the uh, information post-event, that is to say the files of Nick Fury, as it's referred to in a lot of these different stories, that we actually learned that she was basically a student of Nick Fury, that uh, for some reason or another, she had basically gained powers as a result of being the daughter of Mr. Hyde in the comics, and that as a result, she was taken in by Nick Fury and taught how to use her abilities. And this is it. This is all we get. We don't get anything other than that. Brian Michael Bendis does not in any real way expand on the history of her character, and neither does Marvel. And the reason why, as I would go as far as to say, is because she wasn't designed to be a mainstay character. She wasn't designed to be a character on par with Captain America or Spider-Man or any of those guys. And in fact, Marvel goes as far as to say this when we pick up during the events after the House of M. When uh, With the House of M story, if you guys recall our discussion on that, at its conclusion, 98% of the mutant population lost their powers. And so the question was, where do all these powers go? What happened to them all? And Marvel answers this question by creating something called the Collective, which is an amalgamation of all the powers that were gone. And so once the Collective takes on various hosts, it actually ends up bonding itself with Magneto in Genosha. And when it does, Magneto has, uh, I guess, becomes drunk with power, has hitherto unchecked abilities, and he's confronted by the X-Men and the Avengers alongside with S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, which include Quake. And so uh, what, what Daisy Johnson does here is she uh, uses her abilities to basically cause a murmur inside the body of a Magneto, effectively knocking him unconscious, using her uh, earthquake abilities basically to create an earthquake inside the body of Magneto. Now, this is the first time that we actually see her use the moniker Quake, and the way this happens is that once the event is over and she had been fighting alongside the Avengers, she speaks with Captain America believing that this was really more of a test, that the Avengers were wanting to induct her, induct her into their ranks, but Captain America says no. But what she says is that she would rather use the codename Quake if she's going to be part of the Avengers. Now, following this, she really just kind of falls to the background. She really kind of falls to appearing periodically throughout various stories, Dark Reign, things like that. During Secret Invasion, again, a story where the scrolls were replacing humans, supervillains, and super uh, superheroes with scroll replacements, she was a person who was a contact for Nick Fury. She was giving Nick Fury the information he needed while he was underground. She was one of the only people, or if the only person, who actually knew where Nick Fury was or what he was doing, but even then, he only really communicated by hologram. But in addition to this, she's also a character that was part of Age of Ultron. And during Age of Ultron, she was one of the few superheroes who had survived, and she had also fought along alongside Nick Fury when they, would, when they had traveled into the future, and of course was one of the people who was killed here. But again, the character as she appears in the comics is vastly different than the character that we see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the reason for this is because Marvel's basically, I guess, capitalizing on the lack of history that uh, Brian Michael Bendis gave us. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we know that by going through the episodes of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., that we can trace back the lineage, the history of, uh, of, of Daisy Johnson here in saying that, one, she is, of course, as in the comics, the daughter of Mr. Hyde, but we didn't know who her mother was. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're saying her mother is this uh, unidentified woman from China who had longevity, who was most likely an inhuman, although Marvel, I guess, uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't really point to that and say that it's absolutely true. We know that somewhere along the line, during all of this, that uh, Daisy Johnson was left as an orphan. She was taken to an orphanage. Eventually, she had left, and she had ultimately met up with S.H.I.E.L.D., where, of course, we know that uh, that really picks up with the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series. We know that, for the most part, this character that's being presented to us in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is far more interesting and is more in-depth than her comic book counterpart, simply because of the fact that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Marvel has an opportunity to basically rewrite her character and to make her more riveting, to take what little information was given to us in the comics to discard it because in truth it doesn't really matter all that much and then to basically just give us something brand new. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know and I will catch you guys later. Peace. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly. Thank you.